are asking the question of whether or not this is going to become a cold war. And the reality is, is this is a hot war. I mean, what we're seeing is that uh, Russia, under Putin's leadership, has invaded a validly elected democracy, an independent nation, violating international law. And it's, of course, is a threat to Europe uh, and is a threat to our NATO allies and therefore to the United States. What we know is that he has openly stated that his goal is to reunite uh, the geographical territory of the Soviet Union. And we should believe him. He's doing the military uh, modernization and build up in order to undertake that, to threaten the West. He's made very threatening statements against uh, both NATO and the United States. And his actions in, in attacking a country that's no threat to him uh, certainly show that uh, he's going to make good on his intentions. Coming right off, off the debacle of the Afghanistan withdrawal uh, at a time when the Biden administration has shown weakness um, and has sent even mixed messages with respect to Ukraine itself. Um, I think um, you know, Putin, in looking to the Obama-Biden administration when Putin last invaded Ukraine and annexed uh, the Crimea, uh, believes already uh, what he thinks he's going to get out of this administration and sees an opportunity to be able to do this at the least cost. We need to operate from this point forward that, that uh, Putin is standing by his words, and that means that every a nation that was under the Soviet Union's influence or that was actually part of their territory is at risk and is a threat, and that threatens the United States and our allies. So, I mean, the statements that he made over the past several days, uh, threatening the United States, threatening NATO, threatening our Western allies, uh, are only made good if he can continue to build and strengthen his military and sanctions can have an impact on it. But our sanctions have to go to technology. They have to go to the ability of him uh, to build up his uh, military network, what he's doing with hypersonic weapons, what he's doing with cyber attacks, uh, what he's doing in, in building up his uh, ground forces and their capabilities. All of this can be impacted because he needs technology from the West to do that. Uh, and we need to make certain that he doesn't get it. Well, I don't think U.S. troops should be engaged directly, but we do play a role here that is very important. We should be giving intelligence to Ukraine so that they can more effectively uh, defend their own nation. We should be giving them lethal weapons so that they can fight. They've already been very impressively fighting uh, today uh, for their country, uh, which is an independent country from Russia, a validly elected democracy. Uh, those things are, are important for us to do, that this administration should be doing more of them. They did not, you know, the Obama Biden administration did not rise to that occasion after Crimea was in, invaded and annexed into Russia. This is an opportunity for us to, to stand with a democracy and give them the tools they need to defend their own country. Uh, Vladimir Putin has very openly threatened um, the West and the United States. Uh, he's specifically included in his exercises leading up to invading Ukraine, a nuclear weapons exercise, which of course places the United States, our cities at risk. Uh, whenever you have a leader of a, of a nation violating international law and openly threatening the world with weapons of mass destruction, uh, we are entering a very difficult and very dangerous time. This is a time where we need to stand up, show strength, make certain that we put uh, Putin back in his box um, help uh, stop this aggressiveness and uh, hopefully return the world back to an area where, as you know, uh, the Secretary General of NATO has said, uh, there was peace in Europe.